There's an options trade that's incredibly simple to understand and just as easy to execute involving certain stocks a week or two before they're about to release their quarterly earnings. I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's options desk here in New York City, and we've got a guy on our trading desk who developed this approach after many hours of study and backtesting. If you're looking for a simple to understand and simple to execute trade to add to your playbook, as we call it here at SMB Capital, then stick around because I'm pretty sure you're gonna find this interesting. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg, and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan, and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world, trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. Now, I'd like to suggest that you click on our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos that we produce for the trading and investing community all over the world. They're really very valuable. Okay, so one of the great things about working with the awesome options traders on our trading desk here at SMB is the consistent flow of creative ideas. So recently we doubled the capital level for a trader on our desk as he was performing very well and in that context we asked him to resubmit a plan for how he was going to be using that additional capital. So in addition to the trade strategy that he was trading quite successfully, he informed us that he's planning to include in his monthly trading the strategy that we'll be covering in today's video. Now, like any professional trader, he didn't just jump into this strategic idea. Like the true professional that he is, he backtested it for a massive amount of time and picked a basket of stocks that appeared to behave profitably when this option strategy was applied to it around the quarterly release of its earnings report. Now, to explain this concept, though, we need to go into a little bit of options theory here. So some of you may not realize it as yet, but options have an element to their pricing that no other financial instrument has, and that is what is known as the time premium that is embedded in an options price. That time premium can change price for many reasons. One of the major reasons that an options time premium will change dramatically is if there's some kind of an event coming up that's likely to cause the stock to make a large price move in one direction or another. An earnings release is the best example of such a company specific event. So what happens with options pricing is that as you approach earnings, the time premium of the option for that stock starts to gain a lot of value as the risk to the sellers of those options is starting to get really extreme because everyone is expecting the stock to make a big move based on the fresh information they're receiving about the company based on the imminent release of the earnings report. So for example, let's take a look at Alphabet Options, also known as Google Options, and how they've traded around earnings to illustrate my point. So Google stock was trading at about 1200 in March. So here we've got an options chain for Google Options on March 26, which is 34 days away from the Google earnings release. These options will expire in five days later, and as you can see, the call option with a strike price of 1225, which is 25 points above the market, those call options are trading at $3.86. So basically, the buyer of the option will break even on the trade if the market moves up 25 points, plus the option premium of $3.86. So if you do the math, the stock would have to move up over 29 points for the buyer of the stock to just break even. Now, let's move ahead 34 days to one hour before the Google April earnings release on April 29th. Now at this point, Google is trading at 1274.50, and so looking at the options chain expiring five days later, the call options trading about 25 points above the market price is the 1300 call, and as you can see, that one is trading at $10.90. So in other words, the buyer of the call option will only break even if Google moves up over 36 points before the options expire. So comparing the two options chains on options that expire five days later, the calls 25 points above the money are way more expensive one hour from the earnings release compared to the options 34 days out. And that is because there is a much larger chance of the call 25 points above the money being reached five days later if earnings are imminent compared to a random day 34 days earlier when earnings are not looping when there's no major price moving event coming up. Basically, the market is charging triple its normal price because of the proximity and time to the earnings report release. So in options terms, 
That means the options really close to expiration contain a much larger implied volatility than the options 34 days earlier. It's called implied volatility because the market price being so much higher implies that the risk of a larger move is much higher and that risk is getting priced into the options in a big way. Okay, so armed with that background, let's jump into what this desk trader of ours discovered. Through extensive backtesting, he found a basket of stocks that perform well if the trader initiates this specific trade in the week prior to earnings being released. So let's take a look at an example that will flesh all of this out for you. There's an options trade that we've discussed in the past known as a straddle. It's where you buy a long call using a strike price as close as possible to the market price of the stock, and at the same strike, you buy a long put. So let's look at an example. Apple's earnings were scheduled for October 30th after the market closed. So nine days earlier on October 21st, let's say that we entered into a straddle at the money. By the way, I want you to know something important that will come up later. The options chain that we picked expires one day after the earnings are released. Now, that's going to be important later, so just keep that in mind. So as you can see, the call costs $5.68, and as you probably know, each call contract represents 100 shares of stock. So the cost of the call is $568. The put cost is $6, and again, that represents 100 shares of stock. So the cost of the put is $600. So the total cost of the straddle is $1,168, as you can see. So that's the total cost of this trade, but your risk would be quite a bit less. And in his experience, for reasons we'll explain later, the worst loss would likely be about 10% of the original value of the straddle when first initiated. On the profit side of things, this trader has found through backtesting that it's best to take profits when the straddle is worth about 15% more than its original cost. In fact, some traders put in an order to sell the straddle for 15% more than the original price and leave that as a good to cancel order. Frequently, these things will get filled on open and you can start your day with a pleasant surprise. Incidentally, doing that also serves as a way to maintain your discipline so that you exit when your back tests say that you should as opposed to a tendency that some traders have to get greedy and then risk blowing the opportunity to close the trade at target and may, in some cases, end up turning the trade into a loser. That's especially helpful as this trader might have as many as 10 of these trades on at the same time and so the automatic orders put the exit at target on automatic pilot so you don't miss the fact that you've hit target and given that you're managing so many of these trades. In any event, the beauty of this trade is that as the trade gets closer and closer to expiration, the options hold their value and often increase because of the explosion in implied volatility of the options as they approach the big event, which is earnings where the stock is very likely to make a big move directly after the earnings report is released. So that implied volatility puts a kind of a floor on the trade, sort of a natural stop on the trade, which is why I said earlier that the worst case scenario on the trade is about a 10% deterioration of the original value of the straddle, as long as you make sure to exit before earnings are actually announced. And that is an absolute must, but assuming you follow that one rule, losses should be in that mild range that I just mentioned. Okay, so before we work through how this trade actually worked out, I wanted to mention that we're currently running a two free hour intensive workshop where we'll be teaching three real world option strategies that professional options traders use, including a really simple but incredibly effective strategy that some of the greatest investors in the world, like Warren Buffett, use all the time, plus an options trading strategy that has a statistical 80% probability of profit month in and month out, plus an option strategy that you can employ with a stock that you like where you'll make your target profit whether the stock goes up, goes nowhere, or even goes down a small percentage. So if those strategies would be of interest to you, then you should check out the free options class that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free intensive workshop. It's a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. Okay, so back to this Apple trade. It's important to point out that the essence of a straddle is that it's a bet in two different directions. 
We don't really care if the stock rallies, which would help the call to appreciate, or sells off, which would help the put to appreciate. Either direction is fine for us. The only thing that can create a loss is if there's no movement at all, and in some cases, even no movement doesn't cause a loss, as you're about to see. So let's move forward now to two days before the earnings release, which is October 28th. So you can see that Apple has rallied to almost 250, which is 10 points higher than where Apple was the day we entered on October 21st, nine days earlier. So take a look at what's happened here. The call has now risen in value from the original $5.68 price all the way up to $11.30. And the put has dropped down to 222, naturally, because the stock has run very far away from the put and only has value on expiration day if the stock is below that price. So naturally, that will have lost a lot of value. But the combination of the two, as you can see, gives you a combined value of $1,352. Now remember, our original investment was $1,168. So the trader would have had an order in, an automatic order in to exit right here at about 15% gain on the trade. So on that day, he would have closed the trade at his target. So you're probably thinking, well, yeah, of course, the stock moved big before earnings, so he made money on the trade. But what if the stock had just stood still and not moved at all? And so even though the 15% gain was the exciting part of the trade, if you're truly a professional trader, the next point I want to make to you is far more exciting. And that is, if we move to about four hours before earnings, Apple has now dropped back down to less than two points from our original entry price of 240. So from the time we entered the trade until four hours before earnings will be released, the stock has barely budged in value. Yet at that hour, the trade is still up $16. Now, if you think about that, that's actually pretty amazing. So why would I use a word like amazing to describe a trade which is only up 16 bucks? And keep in mind, we would have already exited this trade up 15%. And the only reason I'm covering this point is to show you a critical risk management issue uh, that this trade has. But as I asked, what is so amazing about being up $16? And the answer is that, as I mentioned earlier, the only scenario that's really troublesome for this trade is just when the stock doesn't move at all. And that's because in that scenario, neither the call nor the put will increase in value. So neither of the options increase in value. Now, during any other time other than earnings, if a stock doesn't move at all, a straddle price would normally really deteriorate. Why? Because, for example, in this case, the straddle, when first entered into, is 11 days before it expires, and a lot of things can happen in 11 days. But when a trade is four hours from expiration, the range of things that can happen to a stock's price in four hours is much less than the movements it can make in an over 11 day period. And so the risk to the option sellers is much less also. So if the stock doesn't move at all, the option sellers don't have to load much time premium at all into the options. In other words, four hours is a lot less than 11 days. And so the time premium needed for a straddle with a remaining life of four hours is much less than what you'd need to load into the options price for a straddle expiring in 11 days. And just so you know, this isn't just theory. Let's look back at Apple's options on May 15th of last year. This is the best apples for apples comparison that I could find, pun intended. So as you can see, Apple was trading at around 186.49 at that time. And so the closest straddle to buy at that point would be the 187.5 call and put. And as you can see, we paid $457 for this straddle. Now, this straddle expires in 11 days, just like the earnings trade that I just showed you. So let's move forward on this trade from last year to just two days before earnings when Apple just happened to be trading at almost exactly the same price as our entry price. Now, look what has happened to the price of the straddle. It's cut to more than half. More than 50% of your initial investment is gone. And there's still two days to go here, not four hours like in the previous example. So why did it lose so much value? Because there's no big earnings events coming up nothing pumping up the options and so as time runs out the time premium runs out of the options as well and this is what will normally happen except around earnings so now do you see why i said that it was amazing that the earnings straddle we were talking about earlier a few days before the earnings release was still slightly profitable even though the stock was trading at essentially the same price as it was when it was initiated one day before the options expire that's a big deal why because to professional traders, 
Risk control is everything. And with the straddle, having this natural floor built into the trade as a result of the implied volatility spike right before earnings, it's extremely comforting to know that tra the trade is very unlikely to get out of hand like this trade from last year that lost 50%. So if you can make 15% on many trades and suffer minor, if any, losses on the losers, that's a formula for options trading success. So what I'd like you to take away from this video is two principles. One is cool, which is that you can backtest a basket of stocks and find out which ones have the tendency to make a profit by buying the straddles 11 days out and closing them when they make an adequate profit before earnings are released. But the actually more astonishing takeaway is more subtle. But to the professional trader, it's everything. And that is, if you can have a built-in floor into your trade, the implied volatility spike leading up into earnings, you have a tremendous factor controlling risk in the trades. And so any trading strategy with an easy way to control risk and the potential for significant ga gains on the winning trades, that formula should breed long-term success as an options trader. Now, just to remind you, as I said earlier, if you enjoyed this video and learned something valuable from it and would like to learn three more real-world option strategies that professional options traders use all the time, then you should check out the free options class that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free registration page in a new window so you won't lose this video. Don't worry. Or you could just go ahead on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free intensive workshop. It's really a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. Okay, so now it's your turn. I'd like you to take a look at your favorite trading stocks and find the historical data for the at the money straddles 11 days out from expiration. As a help to the community, Please comment below any stocks that you think might well be candidates for this kind of trade. And let's see if we can put a solid list together to study more seriously. I'll look forward to your input on that.